rebuilding a model steam plant, part 28. Mounting the boiler to the base plate and bolting the base plate to the baseboard. Changing the steam inlet fittings on the Stuart S50 and the number 10V to attach displacement lubricators. If you've been following the series, you will realise that I threaded the wooden base and screwed in some 4BA brass bolts. Now it's time to remove those and detach the boiler entirely from the baseboard so I can fit the mountings to the base plate itself. It's a simple job, four 5BA countersunk machine screws from underneath and here I'm fitting a brass nut on the top of each of them. This is a very simple job and there's not a lot I can say about it, maybe except I'm using brass nuts for a purpose because they don't go rusty. Once I've finished the job, I will be touching in these bolts so they'll disappear into the background anyway. It turns out that I drilled the holes in exactly the right place to avoid the curvature of the foot on the bottom of the boiler's cast mounting plate. In this clip, I'm holding a screwdriver in the slot of the countersunk screw, then tightening the nut in place using a socket. This part of the rebuild is very simple and very boring, but I had to show it as it is part of the sequence. First I fastened down one end and then obviously turned the part around to fasten down the other end. This is the Stuart S50 and I've removed the steam chest cover because I need to re-thread it. I think this S50 was built in the USA because the thread was a quarter by 40 threads per inch and the PM research parts fitted the hole perfectly. When I tried an English fitting, it wouldn't work, so I've re-threaded it using our pitch setting. I'm using a commercial double union, which is part of a steam pipe fitting. The problem is, one end of it is a bit long, and I'm not in the main workshop. What I should have done is taken the fitting up to the main workshop and machined a bit off it, but I thought, no, I'll try a different way, just for a change. Time to enlist the help of my Proxon motor tool fitted with an abrasive cutting disc which makes short work of shortening the thread on the inside of the steam chest cover. Some common sense warnings here. Make sure that you do not mark the inside of the steam chest cover. Also make sure that you don't push your fingers into the cutting disc because that would be painful. I don't think you would shed much blood if you did that, but it would be painful. And the most important thing, wear eye protection when doing jobs like this. I know it's not a very large cutting disc, but if it should shatter, the resultant fragments could go into your eye. And that could be a less than pleasant experience. I don't need to grind this fit in level with the inside of the steam chest, it just needs to be reduced so it doesn't foul the slide valve. I found it worked well if I kept rotating the part and cutting from the opposite edge and that way in the end I got quite a level surface. All I needed to do to finish the job was use some wet to dry sandpaper and rub the part back and forth for a while. This is the inside part of the steam chest cover and now I can fit it back to the engine. This is a highly magnified view of the steam chest of the engine and you can see some metal particles in there. But don't worry, when the steam engine runs, the first steam that hits the cylinder condenses to water and washes away any small particles that would normally be a problem in an internal combustion engine but not a problem in a steam engine. A bit of helpful advice, do not over tighten these fittings, they will shear off with very little provocation. You need quite a delicate touch here. My advice is just nip them up, do not torque them up. To mount the displacement lubricator and the steam inlet pipe, I'm going to be using these fittings from PM Research. These are cast fittings and they really seem to look very much part of the steam age when they're around the steam engine. The first thing to do though is to use a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to re-thread them to the English standard. Now with the help of some Loctite 542 I can put the parts together. I always use this stuff, it's very easy to use and it just stops leaks. A quick tip, don't apply too much of this stuff, 
If it drips onto your paintwork, it will remove it. This cast elbow is a bit lumpy, and up in the workshop I have a few more, so I may not actually use the one you see here, but I'm just showing it as an arrangement. The main piping job has to take place in the main workshop, and very shortly I will be taking it up to the main workshop if I can find a space on the bench for it. This is a Stuart number 10, and I'm using exactly the same principle as I've just shown for the S50. Once again I had to re-thread the hole in the steam chest, which wasn't 32 threads per inch, it was definitely 40, but very tight for my English fitting. This is not the best way to apply Loctite 542 because it runs everywhere other than where you want it to go. But there's enough on the thread to make it seal. I wiped off the surplus with a cloth. I'm fitting the cast part in a different orientation to the way it was fitted on the Stuart S50. The displacement lubricator will screw into the end of it, the part that's facing the camera. And in the other end, I'm going to fit a cast elbow with a piece of threaded extension in it. I'm probably going to use a shim washer because this needs to be quite a tight fit and it needs to point downwards. By doing it this way, it means that the steam pipe, which gets very hot, goes down towards the baseboard and doesn't stick up where someone can accidentally touch it. All that I really need to do now, apart from make the condenser, is pipe the plant and make it look good. That needs to take place in the main workshop, not the one attached to the house. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.